Hey everybody, welcome back to Brandon's Ballistics. I'm your host, Brandon Barker, and today is another video that is a viewer-related uh, video, viewer question-related video. So I will go ahead and say up front, there is no shooting in this video, and there uh, are no code words in this video. So for the giveaway, uh, there will not be a word on my extra videos. It will always be on the main video of that day. So any extra video shorts or video questions, any of the unboxings, well, I can't say it on unboxings, but... I always say when there's going to be a code word or not. So in the, in the beginning of the video, if I say there's not a code word, I will always say there's not a code word except in the beginning of that video. Uh, I would prefer you to watch them all. Don't get me wrong. But to be fair, you know. Anyway, uh, I don't remember if I saw this in the comments, but I know a lot of people ask me in person. Uh, they notice on my videos, I tend to pull a lot of things in my pocket. <laughs> they said, holy crap, what all do you carry? And that led into questions about you know, EDC, everyday carry. A lot of people was asking me, you know, uh, what's my loadout? You know, what do I carry every day? Uh, not only for firearm, but for tools uh, or so on and so forth. So uh, I decided to kind of get into it, uh, you know, to that video. Before I was just going to, you know, answer, you know, piece, you know, person by person like I was. I was, I'm just going to do a video because uh, honestly, I'll show my loadout. And if anybody has any better loadouts or you know, options about how I can replace to be better items or something see something I'm missing in what I'm carrying or et cetera, you know, give me some gestures and suggestions and stuff. I'm all for that. So without any further ado, uh, if we were going to the pistol first. So uh, as I've said in multiple videos, my everyday pistol, my everyday carry pistol is the Shadow Systems MR920. The red dot sight. Go ahead and unload her. Uh, I do carry the 17 round, not the 15 round magazine. Uh, and honestly, I don't carry a second magazine. I used to carry a little side holder, uh, but it kind of gives away that I'm carrying a gun. So, you know, kind of defeats the purpose of concealed carrying if they're going to see that I'm carrying what looks like a magazine, you know, a pistol magazine holder on my side. So, I don't do that anymore. I just carry, you know, the uh, one magazine and a uh, single thing. Also, I was, another thing about view related. But it's actually not good, you know, to load around and then drop uh, the slide. Like I did there. I'm supposed to do empty ticket to that point and then help it go through. That's where I don't lose its timing. Uh, so that's something else that a viewer pointed out that they saw me doing. I did it again, dropped it, dropped it on a uh, on air basically, which you can mess up a lot of things on guns with like on, with that apparently. 1911s are real bad about doing that. It's best never do it with 1911 at all. They are real quick to mess up. Uh, Glocks or uh, Glock, Glock, Glock and Glock platforms, Gucci Glocks, they uh, they can take the beating a whole lot better. So a lot of people are very, uh, including myself. Don't get me wrong, including myself, I am very spoiled to the resilience of Glocks and uh, you know, other Glock platforms. So uh, I'm used to abusing pistols, but that doesn't mean it's all right to do so. I guess I can get into the holder. Uh, try not to show anybody anything that they don't want to see. Here is my uh, holster. Because, uh, you know, bigger boy. It took me a while to be able to find a good holster. Uh, uh, Crossbreed hol holsters. That's what I use. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Stamp. Yeah, it's a cross, cross, ah, cross breed leather holster. That's where it feels nice. It's You don't get that, that bulky kydex feel on your stomach. Uh, it also protects against sweat real good. So when it comes in there, I don't have to worry about the sweat ruining the finish of the gun. It's totally covered. And, you know, you can change how deep it goes. You can change the cant. I did I take a Dremel. Because this was not made for a red dot. This was originally all the way out to here. So I'd take a drill one, modify it a little bit to make it work for my gun. Well, it worked, it worked for, the, for the gun itself. It just didn't work with the red dot attached. And uh, you might be wondering, I don't know if I said it before, that is a Romeo, a Sig Romeo 1 red dot. So, uh, yeah, my red dot is choice for my self defense gun. But yeah, that's on me every day. And I've mentioned that I carry a revolver as a backup gun. However, uh, ever since I got a particular gun, I said I was going to be carrying it every day to where I can you know, get a better grip on you know, doing the whole review. 
and I've really, really liked it. And of course, we're talking about the Beretta 3032 Tomcat, and that is in 32 ACP. It's that just a little tiny, you know, round enough to definitely put someone down if you aim for the you know correct spot. But I like it. It's double action, so uh, it's good. I don't like with the magazine. Really. That is my only. Uh, I don't like about this gun. It's very European. You got the magazine, you know, catch back here. I'll take the one out. Huh? I love that little feature where uh, you just poop. <laughs> it makes it loading really fun. Uh, so uh, I don't know why you'd ever want to do this, but if you want to unload real fast, <laughs> it's unloaded. <laughs> just throws it out there. So uh, that works really well for people that you know have has problems. Uh, you know, cocking a gun, uh, especially a small one like this. That spring is, you know, pretty, uh, you know, heck, safety's on. So say it shouldn't be that bad. Holy God! But yeah, it is, you know, decently, uh, you know, strong. Another reason I like this is where it is double action, and single action. So uh, you know, with the hammer down, I don't have to worry about having, having the hammer cocked every time. I can have the safety off because everybody knows I don't like safeties. I don't trust safeties. People rely on safeties, you know, they tend to get complacent. Uh, there's plenty of people that shot themselves because they thought the safety was on and it wasn't. Uh, or actually got knocked off. So, uh, I mean, that's me personally. As, as I always say, I'm not a professional. I'm not giving advice. That's just me personally. And my, you know, all my, all my, you know, things are just my personal views. I'm not saying what people should and shouldn't do. It's just what I, I say what I would do in that same situation. Anyway, the reason I like this, once again, we're going to uh, confirm everything is uh, empty there, nothing there, nothing there, so there's nothing anywhere near. I'm not taking this off frame, so there's no way something can get inside of this gun. I like this because it is double action, so if I would need to pull it uh, and it hammers down, I can still pull. So I get that, uh, you know, kind of tough, you know, double action pull, then after that, because, of course, when you pull the trigger, it's going to shoot the bullet, push the slide back, load another round, and then, of course, you have the hammer back. You have that real nice, easy, you see that take up? I love this because once you do that take up, it stays. The take up stays back, so you ain't got all that slop. So then you just got that nice little wall to be able to go. And this actually has a pretty nice little trigger. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not the uh, the nicest. It's uh, it's still a little heavy. Uh, what, probably, I think I've read seven pounds or something like that. So it's a, it's a little heavy. Seven, maybe five. I could imagine that'd be seven. But uh, it's definitely not a three pound trigger. <laughs> so, and, and the, uh, the, the, the double action is pretty much, you know, pretty heavy. As far as, I, I, I pocket carry this. I, I think I'll say it was pocket since you didn't see it in the camera. But I do use a pocket holster. I use what the uh, Ruger L, the pocket holster the Ruger LCP2 came in because it fits uh, very nice. So uh, I don't see a reason not to use it. Uh, I'm not somebody who likes carrying a gun that's just willy nilly in our pocket. Uh, I like having you know it protected. You, know, you don't want something actually getting in between the trigger. Uh, and even though I use that in that pocket. That pocket is only for this gun. There's nothing else in that pocket but this gun. Not a magazine, not a pin, not a change, nothing. That gun is the only thing that's in that pocket. And it's very important whenever you pocket carry. Uh, pocket carry is not, by design, is not the safest way to carry. So you gotta find ways to make it safer. Uh, you know, be either by the design of the gun, design of the holster, uh, or just not having crap in your pocket. Anyway, let's get to the next item. Let's see what I got here. What is this? <laughs> this isn't normally in my pocket. There's a 300 blackout. Uh, that's not normally in my pocket. No, don't count that. <laughs> uh, wireless earphones. Uh, you know, earbuds. Because uh, if I want to block someone out, or if I'm somewhere I, because I'm not, I don't like being rude and listening to music or listening to videos in public. You know, when people can hear it. Uh, no matter how awesome I think the video is, doesn't matter if I'm watching my channel or not. I don't want it. <laughs> no matter what I'm watching or listening to, I don't want somebody you know, being like, "God, it's so inconsiderate." Because it is. It is very inconsiderate if you're in public and you're listening to something and something you know, that could bother people. So I had the earmuffs where I don't have to worry about it. Take all three of these things out. Next is uh, the knife I carry. Nice little uh, ADC knife. This is CRKT CEO knife. I got that from a tack pack. 
nice little blade. Uh, really doesn't really anything to do. It's not, you know, it's not going to be a defensive knife. I mean, it could be pushed in, into that category if need be, but it's not like it's designed for it. I don't think it would, I guess, technically work. You know, it's nice and slim design, but it just it's comfortable. You can get a nice little grip on it. You can choke up on it a little bit, you know, to be able to do you know, more fine work with it. So, you know, that's my choice with that. I, I, I go back between this and the uh, the other knife I got in that tack pack, that uh, D, uh, D2 steel knife. Uh, I don't remember what it was called. But anyway, that's, uh, that's technically my favorite knife, especially that I got from my tack pack. Uh, but I tend to carry that more because it's slimmer. Next is a flashlight. Uh, honestly, one of the best weapons you can have is a flashlight. You see why? You, can you see why that's a good weapon? <laughs> yes, you can blind people with it. Uh, you need to have you know, one powerful enough lumens. Uh, this is just on the very small end of it. This is a Lincoln, uh, a Lincoln, you know, Lincoln Outfitters. Uh, I don't remember what model number this is, but it is adjustable for, uh, it does have the strobe, but it's, you know, I can change uh, the uh, yeah the output. You know how how big the whatever. You know what I'm saying. So uh, I use this almost every day. Uh, same thing about knife. I use that knife almost every day. Uh, and I guess technically I use the guns every day, but it's more or less just taking out a pocket or for you know target practice. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's very important to have a good flashlight on you. Uh, either you can even use it as a uh, offhand weapon for your pistol. Of course, I'm sure that's very common. Uh, pistol and knife. Whichever way you want to try to do it. Uh, fist on fists. I mean, you could even use the flashlight as a bludgeoning. It has those uh, crenellations on it. So, uh, don't overlook the usefulness of a flashlight for self-defense. If you want to see a better video on it, check out Mike uh, from Hard to Hurt. Uh, just type in flashlight for self-defense, hard to hurt. And uh, he'll give you way better information because he actually is a, you know, he fights he trains, you know, has his own gym and stuff, uh, ex-police officer. He's somebody that's not just an enthusiast like I am. I'm an enthusiast. He's somebody that can give you way more information, way more professional information about how this is a very, very good professionally, uh, professional, very, very good self-defense weapon. Tool. You know, whatever. Next is the tactical pen. Mainly, I mean, I, I, it's not like I, I don't think I'll ever use it for tactical reasons mainly i need a pen and you know i, I need one that's not plastic it's not going to bend and break it's not, not one that constantly leaks in my pocket that's me all the time with big pens not big pens that's a lighter whatever the, the common little pens that can be big i don't remember what they're called i don't use them anymore but uh you know it's nice little uh, aluminum i think it's aluminum i don't remember but it's nice it's light it's metal so i mean i can push it into a you know to a you know it's a self defense tool, you know, little temper temple smasher. Also has that little uh, wind, you know, glass breaker wind, you know, to be able to get you out of vehicles. But mainly, it's just because it's, it's a pretty good pin. It takes regular pin uh, pin refills. So when this thing runs out, I just stick another one in there. If I don't like black, I'll just change it to a blue pin. If I don't like blue, I change it to whatever color I want. It's the standard pin, you know. So uh, I got this from a tack pack. Uh, this is the same thing you can buy this off the internet for free. I mean, not for free, but for very, very cheap. Uh, supposedly, this is a tack pack design. I just don't see how that's possible. I mean, maybe something's changed in this. Like, I even emailed them about it because that it just they claim to have the patent. I, I, I would like to actually see it. I, I'm a, as you all know, I'm a big fan of tack pack, but whenever, whenever I saw it in the letter on the uh, thing that described it, I just that that definitely made me think a little bit. Different with tack pack. Anyway, uh, anything else in that pocket? Nope. So, uh, not saying which pockets, but there's two pockets that are empty. Next, mace. Yes, uh, you're like, oh, that's a guy carrying mace. I would, really, I'd rather spray somebody with mace than shoot him. This is a lot more legal than uh, than this is. Uh, you know, if somebody's unarmed, unarmed does not mean not dangerous, by the way. I, you know, as I've told people, I've told actually people, you know, before, but not just, you know, in regular conversation, but to, uh, <laughs> to make sure they knew what it's getting themselves into. I don't fight. Like, you know, I, if you do it for sport or fun or whatever, as long as both parties are, you know, consenting individuals, it's fine, but it's just stupid. 
in my opinion. If you're not smart enough, they'll talk things out. I don't know. I don't see what's the point in it. Uh, you should be able to have your intelligence. Uh, you you can have your you know the, the big your biggest muscle to be able to uh, work that crap out. But if not, then just erase it from your life. It's way easier. It's just way less stress on you. Anyway, uh, somebody's unarmed. It's way way less of a chance that you're gonna go to prison if you uh, spray them with this and there and laugh at them as they scream on the ground rolling, than if you uh, shoot them and listen to them screaming around and rolling. Uh, so. I would much rather use this. Uh, that's always, you know, of course you don't always have that option. Uh, and I'm gonna grab the pistol first. You dag on right, I'm gonna go for lethal first. But right after I have my lethal in my hand, so I know for sure that, that if it comes to it, I can stop my attacker. I can then use my other hand to get the pepper spray to hopefully prevent someone from getting seriously hurt or worse. So uh, that's always my you know, intent is to make sure to not because I, I don't want that on my conscience either. I, you know, that's somebody's kid. That's somebody's possible dad. Or, you know, or just, you know, I, that's not something I, I, I don't want on my conscience. Uh, not only just for legal reasons, but, you know, for personal reasons. Uh, I mean, if I was pushed to it, you know, my life's more important than theirs, in my opinion. <laughs> if they're going to cause me a lot of physical harm, then, you know, I'm, I, I, they'll be warned multiple times before they uh, <laughs> decide to attack me. You know, as I've done before, I'm like, if you swing, I want to shoot you. We can talk this out like adults. We can be nice and gentle about it. We can uh, be respectful. Or if you swing, I want to shoot you. I, I don't want to. I, I like to be able to work it out peacefully, but if you can't, if you try to hurt me, I'm going to try to hurt you. Anyway, enough about that. Let's go to the next uh, thing in my pocket. Oh yeah, the uh, once again goes along with the tactical pen, something I don't think I'd carry. This is more of a conversation piece. Uh, if you saw it in the tack pack video, the tactical Sharpie. And it's tactical because it is a steel tip. <laughs> so it's another, you know, uh, stabby type tool, glass breaker, uh, you know, kind of you know, grab and control. If you have that kind of training, I do not. Uh, you know, I, I, I talk one to him karate, but it's not like we train pr particularly with, you know, controlling somebody with, I can't remember what that weapon is actually called. It's like a baton, but like a small, I don't know, whatever it's called. But that's more of a conversation piece, like, yeah, it's, yeah uh, you know, hey, uh, you care to, uh, if they ask me for a sharp, I'll give them that, and they'll be like, why is this right? And they'll be like, I don't know why it's not right. <laughs> Played dumb as long as I can, it's just, you know, it's just funny. Uh, next one, I keep a uh, little multi-tool. And of course, this is a Swiss Army knife. Uh, I've, if I don't use this daily, I use this at least a couple times a week. Uh, not all the tools, of course. Like, I don't think I've ever used a corkscrew. I've never used uh, that little hook that's on the back. See, I've used that little knife there. I've used a toothpick. I've used the tweezers. I've used the bottle openers. I've used the scissors. Okay, so I basically haven't used the, the stuff in the back. But I've used everything else in the front. Swiss Army knives can come in handy. Uh, that right there, that is a piece of paracord. Of course, it's not big enough to be much used for much things, but that is fire cord, so it's tender. And of course, I can take it apart and use the strands for other things as well. What else is here? Okay. Then we have the SOG multi-tool, mainly because it has a pry bar. I use that at least once a week as well. Uh, mainly use the pry bar, to be honest. You know, I don't think I've ever used anything else on this. Nothing I can think of. I think the only thing I'm, the only thing I'm using this for is the pry bar, and because uh, you, know, you don't want to use a knife to pry on, that's a great way to ruin your knife and break it, especially your tip. So there's that. There. Then next pocket, I have a rain jacket, and it's one of those plastic little rain jackets because you don't know where you're going to be. You know, if you're going to be, you know, out and all of a sudden get soaked. Because once you're soaked, you're soaked. You're soaked until you go home. I'd rather have you know something to throw on top of me and not be soaked. Uh, if, if, if that's if I'm out with myself, uh, double these few items if I'm out with somebody else, especially my wife. I carry more. Same thing, tourniquets. Uh, I have one in my pocket right now. Uh, of course, there's an old saying, one is none. Uh, two, two is one, one is none. I do carry one by myself. I keep telling myself I'm, I need to buy another one to carry two. So I can, uh, also want to carry a chest seal, two of them. So you need the front one for the front, one for the back. But if you carry a gun, not only for yourself, but if, you know, God forbid, you have to take, you know, defensive action, hopefully you'll save their life after they're no longer a threat. Um, which, 
I'm not you not a lawyer either. And, you know, so I don't know if you should do that, shouldn't do that. That's your, your decision. Uh, I'll just leave that there. Next is my lock pick kit. Uh, yes, I'm a lock picker, uh, an enthusiast. Yeah, you know, once again, uh, I actually tried doing a lock pick channel a while back, and just I found out really really quickly after you know like maybe five videos that. There's not much I can say to be able with lockpick. I mean, I've got a lot of different tools. Uh, this is just the stuff I carry with me every day. Uh, the thing that's holding this camera up on the tripod, since it's you know, a little off, is uh, my uh, go bag for lockpicking. Anytime a family friend or somebody's locked out, I'll use I'll bring that with me along with this to uh, unlock whatever they need unlocked. Which yeah, I've unlocked a lot of people's stuff uh, for them legally, of course, with permission. And I've bought a lot of locks to be practice with. Uh, if you ever want to see something like that on this channel, I can uh, give some tutorials on lock picking, even improvise lock picking, how to uh, make lock pick tools out of paper clips. That's actually how I started with lock picking uh, before I bought tools. I'm just playing around. Uh, I watched a few videos. Matter of fact, let's see. Is that the last? I think that's the last thing. So, yes, the last thing is this big old beefy wallet. Uh, of course, I have some things in here. I have uh, multiple. Guitar picks, once again, that's uh, these are really great tender. If you want to see a video on how awesome these things are for starting fires, holy crap, you would not think it would be, but holy crap. I carry these on me. I, I, I'll use this before I use that fire tender. <laughs> of course, these are cheaper than that fire tender, too. Kitty cat alert. Hey, baby. She's my youngest. Oh, <laughs> you not want to be on camera? You not want to be on camera? Uh my young is I got an old I got an older one that looks just like her. My oldest cat, my youngest cat are calicos. Both rescues, both gillies. Mm. She has sinus issues. She was found on the coal mine property and she got that slurry stuff all on her stuff and it destroyed her uh nasal cavities and stuff. So now she has permanent issues. So we had to give her uh uh, uh what's it called? Uh, yeah, seizure medicine and you know and antibiotics constantly because she keeps nasal uh, congestion and nasal problems. Anyway, she's coming back in the frame to just kind of, you know, in, if she passes here, good. She passes, if she doesn't, whatever. Uh, in here, I keep it incognito. In my wallet, I should say. Of course, that is a little lockpick card. It has a handcuff key, a comb pick, a couple of different lockpicks. Uh, that's a, just a regular, you know, standard lockpick. There's a rake, uh, a rocker, and a wafer pick and then of course a tensioner uh, uh, trying to see that's what's interesting in here so any more maybe just about I, I used to carry a lot more stuff in my wallet of course i've got other things I don't, the reason i'm looking at it down here because i don't want people to see personal information uh codes and personal information discount codes contacts of course, my uh, other thing, like once again, I can kind of shout out Scary Creek Tactical, keep his business card because I buy most of my guns from him. Uh, real good guy. Uh, is that really? That's I used to have a lot more uh, tools in the wallet. I guess I took a lot out. I had a uh, a wallet knife at one point, but I guess I took it out. Anyway, that's all I have in my. Uh, you know, that's what I carry every day. Uh, and what do y'all think? Yes, that's a lot to carry. But honestly, that's not a whole lot of weight. Not counting the guns or the wallet. That's it. That's it's in my uh, pockets. And of course, with, uh, with these pants, they have multiple pockets. So like this, we'll go here. Oh. Let's go first. Second. Or technically third, I guess. And then, of course, I leave out hung out for easier access. And also, probably I can clip things to it if I want to. Uh, now, first, these pants actually have a special slit to put it. Depending on what time of day it is, I'll go either, you know, the tactical pen uh, second, the flashlight second. I usually do the flashlight second. Tourniquet and this and the lockpick kit and the cargo pants. This little conversation starter. Also, here. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, oh yeah, headphones. Those back in there. 
And my two guns, which uh, you saw where this one is, and you, you didn't see where that one goes. For a reason. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think of it? You know, long video, but uh, I've had a lot, of, a lot of questions about what do I carry every day. So now you know my EDC loadout. Do you see any uh, thing I'm missing? You know, something that would be very useful to carry that I'm just not thinking of. I would definitely want to know. Uh, as you can see, I, I don't care at all to, care, to you know carry a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm already a heavy guy, so let's a look. Let's take a couple more pounds. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you do, hit that like button. Make sure to uh, leave a comment down below with uh, answering the questions I asked. If you want to see any other type of video, uh, if you have any other questions you want me to make a video about, share your rounds with your friends and family, uh, especially other people that's really into EDC, uh, and you know, tell them about my channel. Uh, and then make sure to hit that subscribe button. I swear I saw some hairs floating. Floating around. They might catch you. There's always a lot of hair. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell icon right beside of it. So you, oh, what cat was that? Uh, Luna again. Uh, so, <laughs> ADD. Uh, so you don't miss any future. Uh, um, it, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. And hit the bell icon so you'll be notified each and every time that I upload in the future. <laughs> yeah. You think with almost 40 videos that I have this stuff memorized. But nope. Oh, another cat alert. Come on. In the bit, nope, he changed his mind. I, I, he got camera shy. Uh, you gonna do it? I'll just, I'll just get you. Ollie Bear, yeah. He was abandoned, uh, him and his always brothers and sisters were abandoned on the side of the road as kittens in a curve. People were evil. So yeah, we adopted, uh, we adopted all of them and then we found them homes and we just couldn't let him go. Anyway, uh, if it is the outro, I appreciate y'all stopping by. I appreciate you watching the video. I appreciate you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And definitely appreciate you hitting that bell icon. And uh, we'll see you next time here at Brandon's Ballistics. Y'all be good. Bye-bye.